and this is active transport. Now, before you understand active transport, you must understand the principles of diffusion. So, if you're not sure on that, you need to check up on it um, and make sure you're clear on what's happening. What we've got here is um, a close-up of a cell membrane. Okay, so if we were just looking at a part of the membrane, this is what it might look like. So our green bits here represent the membrane, and notice that there are gaps, if you like, it's permeable, it will let some substances through. So some of small substances, perhaps things like oxygen, carbon dioxide, are free to diffuse in and out. However, if we get some larger substances, um, they can't simply pass through the membrane. Um, and another problem we have is, if we wanted something like, for example, glucose, into our cells, then if we just left it to diffusion, we'd have a problem because glucose would diffuse through, but once it reached an equal concentration on both sides, outside the cell and inside the cell, um, we wouldn't expect diffusion to be uh, work anymore, certainly no net diffusion. In other words, whatever was diffusing in, the same amount would also be diffusing out. Now, sometimes cells need to build up a concentration, and this is how they do it. So here's our cell membrane. This structure here is what we'd call a carrier protein, and it sits in the membrane. And what it does is molecules, let's say this is glucose, they move into the carrier protein, and the carrier protein will flip its shape, and it moves the glucose molecules in. So we'll flip a few more bits through. Here we go. Now at this point we have an equal concentration of molecules inside and outside of the cell. However, and this is the good bit with active transport, it can continue to transport these molecules through even though there's a higher concentration now on this side than the other side. And we sometimes would say that it is working against the concentration gradient. So active transport allows you to build up high concentrations of molecules. It doesn't do this, however, for free. In order for this to work, you need the presence of energy. And the energy comes in the form of a molecule called ATP, uh, which is the universal energy currency of all your cells. If you like, it's a battery that fits into all of your cells. It's a bit more complicated than that, but you can think of it like that for the moment. So ATP, releases its energy to the carrier protein and it flips the molecule through. ATP releases energy or usable energy to the carrier protein, it flips the molecule through. So ATP is different, sorry, excuse me, active transport is different from diffusion because it requires energy. And it can move molecules against the concentration gradient. But it does require the presence of these carrier proteins for it to work. 